Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Sunday. I hope the weekend is going well wherever you're watching or listening to today's show around the world. Plenty to discuss today. We're going to talk about Ricardo Calafuri as that deal finally, finally takes a big step forwards. We'll talk about last yesterday's friendly Arsenal beating Leighton Orient 2-0 behind closed doors at London Colney. Gabriel Jesus and Emil Smith row on target in Arsenal's first pre-season game of the summer. Next one, of course, is in the United States on Thursday. The team fly out today for their US tour. So, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later on the show. We've got lots and lots of reaction from you guys as well on Cheeto, Obi, Martin, and uh, the news that he, well, he is going to be leaving Arsenal and it just it's a kind of waiting to see who it is going to be. But it looks like at this stage, it could well be Manchester United. So loads of reaction from you in terms of what I was talking about yesterday as well. So let's get started on the big news in the last 24 hours. It kind of emerged not long after I did my video yesterday um, that Arsenal have made a big breakthrough in terms of the negotiations with Bologna over Ricardo Calafuri. It is now very, very close to being done. It's not done yet. So you can't sit there and put your celebration hats on, dress yourself in Italian clothes just yet. But it is very, very close now to happening. And Arsenal are hopeful of getting this one done over the line, potentially in time for him to fly out and link up with the squad over in the USA, which would be a big, big boost to Mikel Arteta if he could get him over there, even if it's just for a week, just to start settling in, meet his new teammates in a more relaxed surroundings. Um, we know Mikel likes to do that and fly players out if they can for the pre-season tour. And that will be the hope for Arsenal. But there are still a few things to do in terms of getting this deal done. Player side, no issue at all. Arsenal and Bologna now pretty much done in terms of the agreement for Calafuri. It's just all sort of revolving around what um, Bologna and Basel can agree in terms of this 50% sell-on and how that's going to be structured and what the how that's all going to be handled. But Bologna now happy with what Arsenal are offering and it just is a case of waiting to get this one over the line. But we have taken a big step forward for the last kind of two weeks. It's felt like it's been sort of just stuck in a, uh, what's the word? Forgotten the phrase I'm trying to use there, but it's just felt like it's just been stuck and just sitting there, sitting there waiting for something to happen to kick this deal into life. Now that has happened. And uh, yeah, getting closer and closer to this man on your screen, becoming an Arsenal player, which I think is going to be a really, really interesting move. I mean, we've all kind of joked about it. You know, this was the summer we were all expecting Arsenal to go pretty hard on the transfer market in terms of improving their forwards. And yet the first big sign in the summer is going to be a left-sided centre-back, which is so classic, Mikel Arteta. But when you look at it and you look at how Arsenal, look at Arsenal's team last season, for example, what was the one area in the team that they were always chopping and changing, that they weren't happy about, that there was just constant, you know, one week it'd be someone, one week it'd be another person. You'd have different partnerships being formed down the left-hand side. That was left back. It was just the one position where there was no sort of guaranteed starter almost or no one who'd really sort of grabbed that position, mainly because, you know, if you're in Timber's injury right on the cusp of the season, had he not got injured, you expect he probably would have played left back for the majority of the campaign. But because he was injured... And no one really sort of stepped into the void. You had Zinchenko, you had Tommy Asu, you had Kivior. There was just a bit of uncertainty about that left-sided role in Arsenal's defence. Should Calafuri come in, which it certainly looks like now it's going to happen, then you've just got this, you know, it feels like that is the area absolutely sorted. It does beg the question of what's going to happen with Yuri and Timber. So we'll have to wait and see in terms of what Mikel Arteta's thinking is for him, whether that be a centre-back, whether it be a right-back, whether it be chopping and changing at left-back with Calafuri. But, you know, you look at the strength and depth that Arsenal will have in defence now when this deal gets over the line. You know, this is the strongest defence in the Premier League already. And then you add in someone like Calafuri with the potential that he's got and the talent that he's got and just his ability to carry the ball out. We saw it at the Euros as well. We've seen it with Bologna. You know, he's very, very comfortable getting the ball and driving forward, driving into the central area. So he's perfect, really, for that inverted left-back role um, as well. But then also, if Ben White's going to be inverted on the right-hand side, then Calafuri, you know, so, so comfortable sort of coming inside and creating a central sort of back three with Saliba and Gabriel as well. The possibilities are endless. The versatility is endless. And that's what Mikel Arteta loves when it comes to his signings. And that's why he's pushing so hard to get this one over the line. So it's very, very close now. Just a couple of little bits left to do. And then hopefully he will be an Arsenal player. And hopefully we will get to see him over in the US tour. Let me know your feelings on it. How happy are you about this deal? And the fact it now looks like it's going to get done. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 
Right, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see some pictures here from yesterday's pre-season friendly at London Colney or Shoba Realty Centre. Arsenal beating Leighton Orient 2-0. Goals from Gabriel Jesus and Emil Smith row two completely different teams in the first half and in the second half a mixture of youngsters and senior players of course but really good to see Gabriel Jesus back on the score sheet took his goal nice he was a really nice team goal actually Gabriel Jesus got a lovely bit of play really enjoyed Miles Lewis Skelly's sort of reverse pass of his left foot that just completely sort of split late in Orient open they weren't expecting it they thought he was going to go out wide and then he just reversed it back into the central areas I think it was to Gabby Jesus and then he laid it off to Eddie Nketiah. I can't remember the exact makeup of that goal, but it was just a really nice bit of play from Miles Lewis Skelly. It really did catch the eye. Uh, and then, yeah, Jesus linking up with Nketiah to make it 1-0. Jesus involved again in the second half with um, Emil Smith-Rowe's goal at the back post. Tried to get a shot away. It was blocked, fell into Smith-Rowe's pass and Smith-Rowe with the finish to make it 2-0. Smith-Rowe wearing the captain's armband for the last half an hour of that game now if you're watching again on youtube you can see the team lineups for arsenal completely different teams really some players playing the full for um more than 45 minutes other players just playing first half so you had hein white timber heaven lewis skelly party odegaard nelson vieira jesus and inketia starting in the first half then you had nygaard the new signing obviously he came on for hein in the second half rosiak who's going on the pre on the us tour he came on at the hour mark for White, you had Omar Rekic play, Zaymon Louis, uh, Nichols, Patino, Patino getting 45 minutes, uh, Gower, Wanieri, Smith Rowe, um, Salah, Mahand, and so Charles Sogo Jr. all coming on in the second half. So, a bit of difference in terms of the team, but um, yeah, really, really positive, I think, for Arsenal to get up and running. And uh, yeah, I just thought Gabriel Jesus, there's one bit in the second half. If you haven't seen the highlights yet, head over to arsenal.com and you can see some of the highlights in the game. There's one bit, though, it's in the first half of Gabriel Jesus. The way he brought down this long ball in the box, lovely, lovely control. It ended up with, I think, a shot for Enketia that was saved or just went or went just wide. Um, and it was just a lovely bit of play. And, you know, myself and Team News and Ticks were talking about it on Friday and other people have picked up on it on social media as well. Just how fit Gabby Jesus looks, which I think is a real, real boost because... Yeah, it's just um, to have a fit properly on it and lean Gabriel Jesus going into the start of the new season would be such a huge, huge boost for Arsenal. Fingers crossed he can stay that way during pre-season and really be ready to go at the uh, for the Wolves game when the Premier League does get underway. But that's it for Arsenal. Now you could see um, Jakob Kivior and Alexander Zinchenko were there. They were watching from the touchlines. They've only just reported back for pre-season training, so they weren't in they weren't involved in the game itself, but they were watching from the touchline. So they'll be heading out today with the squad for the US tour to bolster Mikel Arteta's squad even further. I believe Jorginho should be doing that as well. So some more senior players coming back for Arsenal. We're going to have a host of youngsters going over by the looks of it, including obviously Wanieri, Milo Skelly, Aiden Heaven. Looks like, as I said, Rosiak's going to be going. Uh, I think Gower might be going as well. Um, Salah Dean is going to be going. So quite a few of the youngsters are heading over more so than we usually see when it comes to the US tour. I think because of the fact so many senior players are going to be absent because of the Euros and the Copa America over the summer. So plenty of youngsters going to have the opportunity to impress over in the United States. Eddie Nketiah obviously started in that game yesterday. Had a lot of chances, Eddie. Actually, didn't have it. Be, I think he'd have come away from that match really disappointed he didn't score at least one or two because he had plenty of chances, just wouldn't go in for him. But reports out of France now that Marseille are really says, stepping up their plans to try and sign Eddie this summer. Marseille, of course, have already signed Mason Greenwood. So they've just about agreed a deal with Tottenham to sign uh, Pierre Hoiberg as well. Roberto De Zerbi, now the manager there. They're obviously coming back and raiding the Premier League a little bit as they look to strengthen. Lots of changes for them up front. pierre Emerick Aubameyang has left. Other players have left. So they need to bring in some more forwards and they're very, very keen on Eddie Inketia. And some reports from France now that they are very, very close with an agreement with Inketia for that move and that he's very much up for that move, which I can understand why. You know, I think it'd be a fantastic move for Eddie. You know, I think may need to just stay, are you going to stay in the Premier League? You, you, there's going to be interest in the Premier League. But I, I just think that Marseille would be such an appealing move to some players. It's such a fantastic stadium, an amazing place to play, play football. So passionate. You're under real pressure, real scrutiny. You know, it's a really good place to grow up and become a proper, proper senior footballer. I mean, I, I'm not saying that he's not. He's already been around for a long, long time at Arsenal, of course. But I think it'd be a really appealing move for him. Now, they might well be close to an agreement with the player, but you've got to obviously agree a deal with Arsenal first. And 
I think Arsenal should be getting good, good money for Eddie and Ketia. And whether Marseille can actually afford the type of fee that I think they should be getting for Eddie, uh, for Eddie who knows? But be interesting to see what happens. He is going to be going on the US tour unless something changes at the very last minute. And um, so is Emil Smith Rowe, so is Reese Nelson, all these players who do have plenty of interest when it comes to potentially moving out this summer. Um, but yeah, we want to keep an eye on it. be interested to see what Mikel Arteta has to say when he starts speaking to the media once he is out in the US. A little bit of news as well that I'm expecting could well happen today, could well be announced today is Tommy Setford. Um, obviously, it's the deal that's been agreed for a long, long time. Well, a long time, but about a week now with Ajax for the young England goalkeeper. Um, expecting that one to go through. I think he will be involved in the US tour as well. Just needs to finalise the deal, which I think is happening today. And then he'll be flying out on the US tour. Wouldn't surprise me as well in terms of Dan Bentley. I've been saying all week it wouldn't surprise me if Arsenal go back in with a second offer for Bentley. I think there is one that is very imminent. And Arsenal, if they can get that done, he will go over on the US tour as well. It's always been the plan to try and get at least one of these goalkeepers done before the tour. And it looks like Setford is definitely going to be signed but I'm fully expecting uh, another offer, whether it gets accepted or not, for Dan Bentley to go in. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, Arsenal looking to bolster their goalkeeping options. Of course, there's no going to be da- there's not going to be any David Raya or Aaron Ramsdale for the trip to the United States. Right, let's talk about Chido Obi Martin. Obviously, we spent a lot of time talking about him yesterday. There's been so much reaction. I've pulled I've pulled a couple of slides together that will go through just some with some of the reaction to it. A lot of you, actually more than I expected, the majority, actually, quite a, by a, quite a distance, kind of were the same opinion of me of, well, if he wants to go, then just let him go because you, you've done all you can. You've offered him a good... And Arsenal have offered Chido a very, very good package, one that they believe is very, very good for a player of his age, his experience. And um, they feel like they've done all, of they, all that they can. They worked really hard to try and keep him. They presented what they thought was a very good pathway for him. Mikel Arteta was heavily involved in it. Um, they've offered a really good contract for someone so young, but he's still, him and his representatives have still rejected it. So they're not, they don't, they're not sitting there thinking we haven't done enough to keep Cheeto Obi Martin. They really did pull out all the stops to try and keep him, but he's just still decided, and his representatives have decided to move on elsewhere. Looks like being Man United, but there's been lots of clubs that have been sort of offering him, um, you know, terms and stuff like that. He has to make the final decision, but it looks like it's going to be United. Tom here has got in touch and said, if we if if we bend over backwards for Cheeto, that sets a bad precedent for other young prospects. Arsenal have to stand firm. Fuzzy Wuzzy says Arsenal should not allow themselves to be held over a barrel to keep a kid with potential, which is all he is currently. If he wants money, that's up to him and okay. But then it's not purely a football development decision. He currently has physical advantages over others the same age that will not be available to him in the seniors. How good he is actually going to be as a senior is not a foregone conclusion. You win some and you lose some. Uh, And if Arsenal have made a reasonable outlay to keep him and a clear development pathway of opportunity to play for the seniors, then whatever he, whatever he decides is fine. Vet Para says, if you are Cheeto, go to Dortmund or Leverkusen or Leipzig or something like that. If you want to stay in England, go to Brighton. Going to United is just dumb. Remember losing Marcus McGuane to Barca? Saying Arsenal are losing their best players. We are in a second or third contracts with Saka, Odegaard, Saliba, Gabriel, Martinelli, Ramsdale and White. We didn't even allow Nketiah, Isar, Nelson or Balogun to leave for nothing. Wake up people. I think these are some really, really good points. I mean, the point about Cheeto and his physical advantage over everyone else, that's why, again, I, I just haven't seen enough of him. I've seen the highlights of him scoring six, seven goals a game, but I've seen him just walking past players because he's like two times the size of them and so physically stronger than them. I saw this with J. Emmanuel Thomas when he was at Arsenal and he looked like he was going to be the absolute superstar, but he could never transmit that into senior football because suddenly everyone caught up with him phys- phys- um, physicality-wise and he just didn't have those strengths that he had 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 in in, uh, youth football before. So I don't know if it's going to be saying, look, he might be an absolute world superstar. He might go on to become the new, I don't know, the new Ibrahimovic or something like that. And we're all going to sit there regretting this move. But we just don't know. The kid is 16 years old and we've only seen him playing youth football, you know. Um, And so I just don't, I, you know, it's impossible to sit here right now and think if we're going to regret this or not. But I just think if Arsenal have done all they can, and that's certainly what, I've been told that they have. I don't know what else they can do in this situation. I mean, 
Iwile says, if we lose Cheeto, we have to look at Arteta. He doesn't show faith in the youth or non-core first teamers. Under Wenger, we didn't lose this many youth team players because they felt their pathway to the first team. Arteta shows no faith, so they lose hope of making it, which is a fair point. Look, I know a lot of people feel that way as well. The one thing I will say, when Wenger under the whole project youth thing did turn to youth and have to show them these players, um, show them, use these players and show them this pathway, that's all well and good. But also Arsenal weren't competing for the title in that stage. They had no chance of winning the Premier League title really during those stages because of the fact that they were playing young players. Now Arsenal are trying to win the Champions League and the Premier League and trying to compete with the best team in the world and possibly the best team the Premier League has ever seen. To do that is very hard to throw a lot of youngsters into the mix with that. Um, Sky Tour Rush says he's only been at the club for two years. It's not like we need to feel stressed about it. If Arsenal have done what they can to keep him in terms of finances and potential pathway, then let him leave. It's a shame for us to lose something potentially big here. But yeah, no need to dig on the guy. I wish him good luck and we will see if he chooses the right decision or not later in the years. If he had been here for five plus years, then I would definitely join the meltdown squad for sure. Yeah, and I, I kind of said that yesterday. You know, he's only been at Arsenal for two years. He's got no emotional ties at Arsenal. We don't know who he grew up supporting when he was back um, growing up as a kid. You know, he's from Scandinavia. There's so many links to Manchester United from Scandinavia. So he could have been a huge, passionate Manchester United fan for all accounts. We just don't really know. Um, Naya, uh, Naya says, why is Wanieri pulled into the first team and Odie Martin not given the same consideration? Well, I just think that Mikel Arteta clearly thinks that Wanieri is better than Obi Martin, I would imagine. Um, I can't really think of any other reason. If 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 Arteta thought that Obi Martin was ready to play, then I'm sure he'd have him more and around the first team. But we've not even seen it. It's not even been close to that. So I just don't think Arteta has any feeling. And this is just a hunch. It's not what I've been told. I just don't think, you know, Arteta would have seen him and he, Arteta was involved in wanting him to stay. But, you know, he can't think that he's ready to be in around the first team. We don't really see him even training with the first team at the moment. Like we see loads of the other youngsters doing it, but we don't see Cheeto. So I just don't think, I'm just not sure they think think he's ready. But again, that's just a hunch more than anything else. Um, we've got one from Mura at the bottom. says, Cheeto is not established in the under-21s, but in the under-18s, um, we cannot melt when he was actually height bullying at the age group. It's okay for academy prospects to move around. We have Wanieri, Max, Zidalman, and Miles Lewis Skelly. Let's not be greedy. So yeah, another one talking about the physical uh, advantages that Chido has over a lot of other players his age that he's definitely been taken advantage of. But look, we'll have to wait and see. As I said at the start of this, ultimately, what Chido goes on to achieve in his career is how we're going to all view this four or five years down the line. If he goes on to be a huge success and a world superstar, then obviously we're all going to be sitting here banging our head against the table thinking, oh, why did we lose him? But We've seen so many youngsters move on. I've seen so many meltdowns. Someone Mark, someone mentioned their Marcus McGuane to Barcelona. I remember when that happened, everyone was like, why? Why have we let that happen? Marcus McGuane, he's gone to Barcelona. He must be so, so special. And look, you know, he's had a good career in the lower leagues, but that's all he's gone on to achieve. So you just can't tell at this age. So I think the, the proof is going to be in the pudding, as they say, and we'll find out that in a few years time right thank you very much for watching and for listening everyone appreciate your time as always do have a good end to your weekend wherever you are watching or listening to this around the world i'll be back tomorrow of course to do it all over again anything you want me to discuss in that show get into the comments with your questions your opinions your comments and i'll pull some of them together and get them included until then speak to you later bye bye